Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial we're going to be covering a supplemental topic to chapter 6 where we're going to talk about an alternative way by which we can name covalent compounds. Now as we learned just prior to this pre-lecture tutorial we can name covalent compounds by using the prefix system. So using prefixes like mono, di, and tri to indicate how many of each atom is present within the formula of a molecular compound. But there is another way to actually name compounds that are covalent. And it involves calculating what we call oxidation numbers for all of the atoms within the formula for the molecular compound. Now, essentially what oxidation numbers are is they are numbers that are assigned to show the distribution of electrons in the compound. Okay, so these numbers are not full ionic charges, and we shouldn't treat them as such, but essentially if an atom in the formula for a covalent compound happens to have a negative oxidation number, then that implies that the electrons within the compound are gravitating more towards that particular atom than those atoms in the formula of the covalent compound that have positive oxidation numbers. And so in order to assign these oxidation numbers, there's a set of rules. Now, as it turns out, if you actually go to page 494, in the textbook, you're going to find a table that contains the book's presentation of the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. And the presentation of the rules is fine, but I'm going to use this somewhat simpler chart for this tutorial. It's essentially the same concept, but this chart's a little less busy and I think a little bit easier to understand. So the first rule for assigning oxidation numbers is that the oxidation number for any atom in its elemental form or any compound that is a pure element, the oxidation number is zero for that atom. So for example, if I have sodium, the oxidation number for sodium metal, so solid sodium, is zero. So the oxidation number is zero for sodium here. The same thing if I have hydrogen and hydrogen gas, or if I've got, say, neon, which is a noble gas, but basically it's monoatomic, all of these are examples of substances that are elements and their atoms would be assigned an oxidation number of zero. Now, if I have a monoatomic ion instead, then the oxidation number for a monoatomic ion is the charge of the ion. So, for example, if I'm talking about calcium cation, which has a 2 plus charge, then basically the oxidation number for calcium is plus 2 in the calcium cation. Similarly, if I have the nitride ion, the nitride ion has a negative 3 charge. So that means that the oxidation number for nitrogen in the nitride ion is negative 3. Okay, now the next rule is all about how we relate the oxidation numbers to each other. When I have a molecule, then since molecules do not bear a charge, the oxidation numbers all have to add up to zero. Now, if I'm working with a polyatomic ion instead, then basically, for a polyatomic ion, then basically the oxidation numbers have to add up to the charge on the polyatomic ion. I'll demonstrate rule three in a little bit greater detail just underneath the table once we've actually gone through all the rules. Now, the next rule, well, actually the next three rules, I should say, are element-specific rules. The first one has to deal with fluorine. This rule is simple to interpret. Fluorine's oxidation number will always be negative 1. Always. Now, hydrogen tends to have a consistent oxidation number, but it can vary a little bit. Basically, if hydrogen is actually paired or bonded to non-metals, then its oxidation number will be plus one. But if hydrogen is paired with metals, or paired with boron, for example, 
then basically the oxidation number for hydrogen in this case will be negative 1. And oxygen has a somewhat similar rule too. The oxidation number for oxygen is normally negative 2. Okay, but it can be negative 1 in peroxides. So for example, this is hydrogen peroxide. In this particular compound, the oxidation number for oxygen is negative 1 instead of negative 2. There's one other exception that this particular chart does not mention, and that is if oxygen is in the compound oxygen difluoride. In that case, because as you recall, the oxidation number for fluorine is always negative 1, then here, in this case, the oxidation number for oxygen is going to have to be plus 2. Okay, but other than these exceptions, oxygen's oxidation number is pretty much almost always negative 2. Now, if you notice, basically the element-specific rules are very few. And as we know, we have many elements in the periodic table. And so, as long as we can determine some of the oxidation numbers by using some of these basic element-specific rules, then we can also make use of rule number 3 about what to do with the sum of the oxidation numbers to do a little algebra and find any other oxidation numbers that we might be missing. So let me illustrate that with a couple of simple compounds. Let me take methane. Okay. Now I'm going to assign the oxidation numbers for both the carbon. So I'm going to find the oxidation number for carbon in methane. And I'm also going to find the oxidation number for hydrogen. Okay. Now, the oxidation number for hydrogen is easy to find because it's covered in rule number 5 here. Basically, hydrogen in methane is paired with carbon, which is a nonmetal. And so because of that, the oxidation number for hydrogen in methane is plus 1. But if we look at the formula for methane carefully, there are four hydrogens. So 4 times plus 1, that means I've built up an overall oxidation number of plus 4. And if you recall, according to rule number 3, since methane is a neutral compound, then the oxidation number for carbon added to the overall oxidation number for hydrogen, that should equal 0. So I'm going to add some number to 4 to get 0. And so by using principles of algebra, I should be able to figure out that this missing number is negative 4. And that negative 4 has to be carried by the one carbon within the methane molecule. And so that means the oxidation number for carbon in methane should be negative 4, and the oxidation number for hydrogen for each hydrogen should be plus 1. Let me do one more example. Let me use a polyatomic ion, just so that we can contrast that to what we do with neutral compounds. In this case, let's start with the oxygen, since oxygen has its own element-specific rule for assigning oxidation numbers. So for the sulfate ion, I'm going to determine the oxidation number for sulfur, and I'm going to also determine the oxidation number for oxygen. Okay, And interpreting rule number 6 in the table above, basically sulfate ion is not a peroxide. It's also not oxygen difluoride, and those are my only exceptions to rule number 6. So that must mean that oxygen must have an oxidation number of negative 2 in the sulfate ion. But again, if you look at the formula carefully, there are four oxygens. So that means I have to account for all four of those oxygens having a negative 2 oxidation number. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And so that means that the oxidation number for oxygen, or the overall oxidation number for oxygen, has to be added to the overall oxidation number for sulfur, and all of that should add up to, if we take a look at the polyatomic ion formula, it should add up to negative 2, since the charge on the sulfate ion is 2 minus. So again, if I do a little algebra, I should be able to figure out that this missing number should be 6, because 6 plus negative 8 is equal to negative 2. This one sulfur has to carry this one oxidation number of positive 6. So that means the oxidation number for sulfur is positive 6, and the oxidation number for oxygen is negative 2. 
in this polyatomic ion. So let's apply that to naming, all right? Because as I said, these uh, oxidation numbers can be used to name covalent compounds in a system that is referred to as the stock system. So to wait, the way to make this work is to actually go and assign oxidation numbers to the compound. So let's do these first three. All right, I'm gonna have to find the oxidation number for nitrogen and the oxidation number for oxygen in nitrogen monoxide. So again, using my rules, oxygen should have a negative two oxidation number because nitrogen monoxide is not hydrogen peroxide or oxygen difluoride. So that means that the oxidation number for oxygen is negative two. And since there's only one oxygen, then this is the overall oxidation number so far. Since nitrogen monoxide has no charge, it's a neutral compound, that means that the oxidation number for nitrogen must be plus two. So now that I have both oxidation numbers, the way that I use the stock system is I'm going to take the name of the first atom, nitrogen. Now, nitrogen has the positive oxidation number in this compound. That positive oxidation number goes in parentheses in the form of a Roman numeral. So it's similar to what we did with transition metal cations before. So we're going to take the positive oxidation number and put it in parentheses. And then I'm going to name the second atom as if it were a monoatomic anion. So I'll call this oxide. So this is nitrogen 2 oxide in the stock system. Let me do this next one. Okay, here I'm going to need the oxidation number for chlorine and the oxidation number for phosphorus. So if you recall, chlorine is actually in group 17 in the periodic table. So it has seven valence electrons. And in order to get its octet, it has to gain one more. So because of that gain of one valence electron, the oxidation number for chlorine here should be negative one. Now, again, there are three chlorines. So that should be three times negative one. So far, our overall oxidation number is negative three. But again, since this is a neutral compound, I'm gonna to have to add something to negative three to get zero. And so I would have to add positive three to negative three to get an overall oxidation number of zero for this neutral compound. So to name this compound, I would start off by naming the first element, the element on the left. So that should be phosphorus. I'm going to open a set of parentheses, and in this parentheses, I'm going to write the oxidation number that is positive for this compound, which is plus 3. So I'm going to have to put in a Roman numeral 3 here. So this is phosphorus 3, and then I name the second atom as if it were a monoatomic anion, so this would be chloride. So this would be phosphorus 3 chloride. Let's do one more. Okay, so for this one, all right, I'm going to separate a little workspace for myself here. I'm going to need the oxidation number for nitrogen and the oxidation number for oxygen. Once again, this compound, dinitrogen pentoxide, is not one of our exceptions for rule number six here for oxygen. Basically, it should be an oxidation number of negative two since oxygen is not part of a peroxide in this compound and nor is it a part of oxygen difluoride. So since I have five oxygens, five times negative two, so far I have an overall oxidation number of negative 10 for the compound. The negative two is just oxygen's oxidation number. Now again, since this is a neutral compound, then that means I have to add something to negative 10 to get the oxidation numbers to add up to zero. With a little algebra, I should be able to figure out that that should be positive 10. But there are two nitrogens. So each nitrogen should then have an oxidation number of plus 5, since there are two nitrogens. So plus 5 times 2 would be plus 10. So that means the oxidation number for each nitrogen should be plus 5. So that would make this name nitrogen 5 oxide. Okay, 
So try some of the follow-up exercises. We'll discuss this further in class. Again, if you have any other questions, make sure to email. See you tomorrow.